The overnight success of our Eureka moment typically takes years of hard, deep research and understanding. This is a very long journey. It takes a lot of iteration and refinement to come up with that, that final, that golden solution. It's not, it's not perfect from the beginning. The trick is, and where the value comes from is, don't be afraid to, to take risks. Don't fear, be afraid to get in front of a customer, present technology that is really disruptive and difficult to understand, and don't be afraid to fail. We had visited high-end retailers that literally hid the scanners at checkout. Like they, they buried them somewhere so they weren't on the counter. We made an observation that customers were actually trying to hide all the POS equipment because it just didn't fit with the environment that they were trying to build. As we thought about the problem of how do we push our technology into the background and allow our customer's brand to come forward, we thought about how do we deliver just something that is over the top experiential and what can we do? Let's just fill this room full of ideas. Doesn't matter good ideas or bad ideas. And let's just go at it. Out of that came 15 separate design studies of how we would disrupt the business. In the case of uh, DS4800, we want this to be appealing enough so that they wouldn't want to hide it. Actually, they would want to you know, uh, embrace it and put it in the environment and showcase it. And by doing that, they may even also put their own brand on top of it. Initially, we presented inside our organization, and it was like a love of first sight. You know, you see it, and you, you know when people like it. There, there's a moment, and you know when you've got it, when you, you have a design on the table, and it's a, almost a galvanizing moment where our executives or people who are looking at it said, I want that. I, we've got to have that. Let's go. It is about find something different, find something new. We understand sometimes you're going to fail. In fact, if you don't fail, you're not pushing the envelope well enough. That is that kind of environment. Advancing the concept forward without overdefining it, understanding what's good about it, what needs to be modified as a result of that, making course corrections, being agile in the way we do that, spinning another prototype, and then carrying that methodology forward. It's so powerful. It's just amazing to see it work. For me, though, it's, it's really more important to see that response from a customer perspective. And they say, I've got to have that because this, this informs me of something that I've been thinking about, but I hadn't told anybody, and you've solved it for me. Creating really disruptive innovation is as much about what you know as it is about how you behave. And we really emphasize the second part of that uh, heavily in our organization. Uh, and by that I mean uh, failing fast is part of the equation. Uh, being able to identify uh, various opportunities we can go after and then running them to ground uh, one way or the other. Proving if it's going to work, and if it is, then taking it to the next stage. If it's not, uh, avoiding falling in love with an idea that's not going to be able to take flight. It's through this relentless pursuit of perfection and excellence that gets us differentiated solutions for our customers. So it's really fail once, fail fast, because it costs you less money. But once you learn from that experience, everything becomes much, much better. Follow the technology disruptors. Follow the zebra.